I'm going to share my screen really quickly so that you guys can see this video. And I'm going to mute. Can you guys hear me? All right, so I'm going to show you guys a video. Make sure I find the first one. Number one is going to be running hard through first base. All right, if you guys that watch a lot of baseball, you will know that Billy Hamilton is one fast dude. Okay, so this can be a game changer. This is, and, and I did this kind of on purpose for all you Cub fans because I'm a Sox fan, so it's even better. This is Billy Hamilton beating out a ground ball to first base. Anthony Rizzo has the ball. Okay, this should be an out. This could be a game changer for sure. Okay, guys, that's an out. No doubt. Ground ball to first base. That's an out. Okay, so we talked about ways to make things up, make up an out. Maybe we gave away in the field. There it is. We just got a base runner on base that shouldn't be there. That's how we can change things in a positive way for ourselves. Okay. Rewind it. They're going to show it one more time. Look how hard he goes right out of the box. It's got to be hard right out of the box or he's never going to have a chance. All right, guys, that's number one. Busting it hard every time. That is an absolute expectation. No matter who you are, we all can bust it hard out of the box. You don't even have to be fast to make that happen. Just go as hard as you possibly can. Now I'm going to switch to the other one. All right, this one, I'm going to switch my screen off so you guys can see me really quick for a second. All right, can you guys see me? All right, I have to be super clear with this, okay? When you get a base hit, just rounding first base lazily is not okay. I know we're excited. We got a hit. We get down there. We take a round. We look around. We jog it back to first base. Okay. When we talk about ways to take an extra base, we have to have that mindset right out of the box. Maybe nine and nine, ninety-nine percent of the time, it's not going to happen. But that one percent, or that one time out of ten that it does happen, where that outfielder bobbles the ball, if we leave the box the right way, we could be standing on second base. Okay? But if we don't leave the box that way, we're never going to have that opportunity open up. Okay, So I'm going to show you guys a video of Jason Worth. He was on the Phillies when Bryce Harper was on the Phillies, when they were doing really well. Uh, I'll take it back before Bryce Harper was on the Phillies, back when it was Ryan Howard and Jimmy Rollins and those guys when they were winning the World Series. So I'm going to switch back to the other screen. So you guys can hear me and see this. Billy Hamilton one. Right, so this is Jason Worth. All right, and you guys are going to see how hard he rounds first base. Now, he's not going to go to second on this, okay, but even more so, we'll be able to see why this is so important. Watch how hard he comes around first base. Now, if this outfielder bobbles this ball, he's on second base. He rounded so hard, he had to break down with the slide and jog back. Look how fired up his team is. I'm going to go back to the beginning. Watch when they show him round first base. If that outfielder bobbles that ball even just a bit, he's on second base. But if he doesn't go that hard around the base, if that outfielder bobbles it, he's just standing there watching, shrugging his shoulders. All right? So we have base running starts with having this aggressive mentality like we talked about the other day at all times. Okay, it doesn't we don't pick and choose when it comes and goes. It has to be all the time. Okay, fellas, I'm gonna switch back over. Are you able to hear any of that? Okay, good. Guys, give me one second. I know we're doing a lot of swing, screen switching today. All right. Okay, so like I said, it's a mentality, right? It's up here. It's doing it all the time. 
time always being aggressive, picking up our coaches. Okay, so eat there, right there, that's a way to steal second base before another pitch is even thrown. That outfielder boots that ball, kicks it around a little bit, even on a fly ball that we assume that they're going to catch. That outfielder drops that fly ball. Not only do I get a single out of it, I'm going to be standing on second base. Okay, but it all starts coming hard out of the box. Um, so though, that's what I want to cover from getting from home to first. Now we talk about getting from first to second. There's ways we can do it by ourselves as a runner. There's also ways that we can do it as a hitter at the plate. Okay. So ways we can get there. Obviously, batter gets walked, we're moving to second base. We can get there on the fielder's choice. We can get there on a base hit. We can get there on a balk. Okay. We can get there on a steal. Okay. And obviously we talked about our signs the other day. 11 you guys will have that delayed steal. Okay, we'll have a hit and run. We'll have a straight steal. Okay, so there's different ways that we can do it there. All right. The one thing I want to flip around to the board and talk about from a base running standpoint is what we do when we're that runner on first base and there's a fly ball to the outfield. So I want you guys to see this on the whiteboard. Get that in view. Well, before I jump over there, I put a quote up today. Okay, I thought this was a good one for what we're talking about. And talking about mental skills, I put every strike brings me closer to the next home run. That was Babe Ruth. All right, guys, I know as a youth player, we get a strike on us, our mentality changes, okay? We strike out, our mentality changes us. What we need to make sure of is that we don't let that happen, that we're mentally strong enough. We have a strike on us, that's okay. Think about the impact of what that statement means. Every strike brings me closer to the next home run. Closer to the next hit, closer to the next double, closer to the next walk. At the end of it, it's just closer to the next good, positive thing. Don't let the negative things lock you from the next positive. Okay, I thought that was a great quote. So let, let that one stick a little bit. I'm going to jump around. All right. What I want to show you guys is on a fly ball to the outfield, what we want to be thinking about. Okay, so oh, that's a bad one. So if you are the runner on first base, I'm going to flip my computer so I can make sure I stay in a good screenshot here. Okay. If you are the runner at first base, right, and there's a fly ball to the outfield, okay, the first thing we're going to do generally is go halfway. We're not going to stand on the base. That doesn't do us any good. If I'm going halfway and that outfielder drops the ball, that gives me time to continue on to second base so they can't force me out. Okay. Then way I only have to run half the distance instead of the full distance. Okay. If they catch it, okay, say that's a fly ball to the center fielder and he catches it, I still have time to get back. He's not going to throw me out. Okay. That's why we think halfway. So fly ball to the outfield while we're standing on first base, okay? we're automatically thinking, go halfway, and I'm going to stand there in a position where I can read that play, and then I can go back to first base. Okay? That's number one. Okay? Now, the only difference there is as you get better as a base runner, we talk a lot about making reads. Okay, and what you have to have a feel for is the read of where, where that fly ball is on the field, the strength of an outfielder's arm, and the direction he is running. Okay, so knowing this, if there is a fly ball, the left fielder is here, and there is a fly ball back here. Okay, we have to judge as a, as a runner at first base, okay, if he has to go catch that ball, going to happen? It's one of two things. I'm either going to be halfway and come back, or if I know I'm going to tag, then my coach is going to say tag, because I'm going to be here. Even if that ball drops and he's, you see his back, you can read his letters on his jersey, because he's running backwards. Okay? I'm going to have time to get to second base anyway. Okay, so in that case, I can be here, even if he drops that, I'm still getting second base and maybe more. Okay? 
So if that outfielder, or say it's both outfielders, they have to run and you see their backs, the situation changes. Now I'm probably gonna tag up if they catch that and I'm gonna be at second base for sure. Okay, so it's not just a matter of go halfway, watch them catch it, go back to first. It may be, if they're gonna be far enough, we're gonna challenge them and we're gonna tag up and take an extra base. And that's another scenario of, okay, we could just be back on first base, but we're gonna take something from the other team and we're gonna get an extra base. And that's gonna fire us up, that's gonna get our, our team going, that puts us in position to score. So when we talk about making our own breaks on the bases, those are the kind of situations where we can be really smart about it and take what the other team gives us, okay? The other thing I want to make sure you guys understand about first base is going first to third, okay? Give me one second. Get the field back together here. And this is now not on a fly ball, but on a base hit, all right? I'm going to go to the screen really, on my computer really quick and share it with you guys. I want you guys to see this video really quickly. Hopefully you guys can hear me. I'm going to share my screen. Now, this is a base hit from Eric Hosmer, and Gerard Dyson's going to go first to third. But I, want to, I want you guys to see how hard he breaks right away. Can you guys see that? Yep. Give me one second, guys. Sorry. Perfect. Sorry, guys. All right. Rewind that. Okay, so this is a base hit to, to right field. And you guys are going to see how the runner breaks hard. And instead of settling for two, he's standing up on third. All right, so look at the situation of the game now. There's one out. Runners on first and third. So there's no force at third base now, instead of runners on first and second and having multiple chances for a double play. It changes a lot of things. Look how fired up the whole field is. All the fans are fired up. And that's just a regular base hit to right field. He's running, he's looking back. I'm gonna rewind it really quick. Cause I need you guys to see. Watch the runner here. Right, he spins his head. He's watching the baseball. Okay, guys, that is incredibly important. You as a runner have to know where the ball is. His coach didn't tell him to go to third. He knew he was going to make it to third because he saw where the ball is, and he started, he started running hard right out of the gate. Good secondary, hard break, and he's gone. Puts his head down, he's made the commitment to go to third base. Changes the whole game right there, and that's a playoff game. That's a big play. I'm going to switch back around. Share my screen. Jump back in here. All right, guys. So what we want to understand, get rid of these outfielders really quick. When we're that runner on first base. There's a base hit. I take my secondary, and that's my time to read the ball as it leaves the infield. Once the ball has left the infield, just like we saw the runner do there, turns his head, finds where it's at, okay? It's even easier when it's to left field or right field because as you're running, you see it in front of you. If you know you're gonna beat that throw, take it. Okay, that's game changing. If you see the ball down the left field line and he's still running to the ball, that left fielder, here, okay, while you're rounding the bag, you know you're going to beat that throw to third base. Take it. It doesn't take a coach and you guys slowing down to do that. Take that base, okay? 
good base runners don't have to be coached. I know you guys are young and you're still learning, and that's why at this age we are there to help and coach you. Okay, but as you get older, good base runners do it on their own. It's instinctual. Okay, so these are the kind of things that we want to be thinking about when we're on the bases. Okay, if I'm if I'm that runner at first base, take my secondary ball down the line to left field, and I'm just jogging around second base, and my coach is over here yelling, "Come on, come on, come on!" But I was jogging right here. I'm either going to get thrown out or he's going to have to send me back. But if we get a good secondary, break hard, find the ball, see that left fielder, and make that decision on our own, now our coach is waiting for us with a big high five over at third base. Okay? Because he didn't even have to tell you. You made that decision on your own. Okay? That's what good base runners do. Okay? So there is my piece on Second from first base to second base. Okay. Now let's add a runner. We're going to talk about going from second base to third base. Okay. Obviously, we can get there on a sacrifice bunt. We can get there on a ball and play. We can get there on a fielder's choice. Okay. We know those normal plays. Hitter walks with the runner behind us. We advance. Okay. Those are the things that are common. Okay. Another way that we can make sure of, and I'm going to erase the runner at first base for the moment. Okay. Runner at second base, nobody on first base. Now I'm going to put us in the hitter's mindset for a minute. Okay. I'm the guy at the plate. Okay. I'm in a regular 1-1 one, one count. Okay. I'm not in a hitter's count, and I'm not in a two-strike approach. Okay. I'm in a regular count. My mindset needs to be, I want to hit something. On this side of second base. If I can hit it anywhere, it can be a ground ball, it can be a line drive, okay? But if I hit it to this side of the field, I'm advancing that runner to third base. Okay, so if we have no outs and a runner on second base, yes, we would love to put a ball in the gap and hit a double, okay? But we will settle for a base hit or a ground ball to this side that moves the runner. Okay, that's what situational hitting really is. Okay, we got a second baseman right here, hitter at the plate. I'm a left handed hitter. I just hook a ground ball to the second baseman. Our runner advances. He throws me out at first base. Okay, I'm not hanging my head feeling bad because I grounded out to the second baseman. Okay, I'm pumped because I just gave us a runner at third base with one out. And there are a lot of ways for us to score from third base with only one out. Okay. So that's when we talk about being a team player and hitting situationally, not just worried about what my stats are. That's how we do it. All right? yeah. Knowing how my, the outcome of my at-bat affects us as a team as a whole. Okay? So when you have a teammate who just grounded out to the second baseman, and he's walking back to the dugout with his head down, remind him that he just put a runner in scoring position to help our team. Okay? That's where we can pick our teammate up instead of him walking around with his head down. Remind him, hey, dude, you just moved that runner. We're in good shape. Next guy's going to drive him in. We score a run. Okay. That's how we have to start to think as a player. Okay. As you guys get older, if you start to think that way, you're a really dangerous player. Because then even when you have a bad at-bat, okay, you're going to have a productive at-bat. And that's a very good thing. Okay. We talk about one thing we'll do when we're outside is quality at-bats. There are a ton of different ways to produce a quality at-bat. And as long as we're advancing a runner, that's a productive quality at bat. And that's how you have to learn to think of it. If we can think about our at bats being quality versus just being a hitter and out, it's a lot easier to stay in a positive mindset. All right, guys? Try to clean up the board here really quick. I'm going to show you guys a video before we get to third base, just because it takes place at second base. Uh, but it also applies to our runner at third. Okay. So what I want to show you guys is the proper way to tag up. Okay. And we'll talk about tagging from second to third before we talk about tagging from home to first. So let me jump back and share the video first. I know we're doing a lot of screen switching today. Okay. Uh, give me one second. My last video. Not my last video. 
I lied to you guys. Sorry. Two more videos. There it is. All right, so we're going to have Josh Donaldson tagging up at second base. I'll show you guys the whole play, and then I'll break it down for you. So this is a fly ball to center field. Outfielder had to go deep. Donaldson's going to tag up and put himself at third base. And now he puts himself one base closer to scoring. Okay, the reason that I'm showing you guys this is they're going to show how he tags up. Get there for us. All right. And I am going to freeze it right there. Okay, I want you guys to look at his back foot, his right foot, and how it's completely on the base. Okay. One way guys get in trouble on tagging up is they just have their toes on the base. Okay. A tag up play is very bang bang and it's completely up to the umpire's discretion. So if he's not 100% certain that you were on the base long enough until the ball was caught, there's a chance he's going to call you out if the other team appeals. Okay, so we want to make sure not just our toes are on the base, but our entire foot, including our heel, is on the base, on the corner still, but on the base, so that there's no doubt that we stayed on the base long enough. Okay. You can see him take off, head down, he's going hard, and now he's standing on third. Okay. I'm going to switch back around to the board so I can show you guys on the field. Same thing goes when we're on second base, kind of like we talked about on first base. Okay, so fly ball to the outfield, okay. hit the ball to the left fielder, and it's routine. We could take a couple steps off, kind of like when we said go halfway at first base. Okay, because more times than not, that's going to be caught and we're going to retreat. Okay, then if it's dropped, we still advance to third base. Okay, but now on a play where we know we're going to tag up. I'm going to tag up, and that could be a ball to the right fielder, center fielder, or deep. has to be deep left field. Okay, but say it's a ball to the right fielder. I want to make sure you guys understand this. Ball to the right fielder. Okay. Ball is caught. When you are at second base tagging up, okay, I'm going to try to do this in the camera as best I can. My foot is on the base. Okay. I'm not staring at my coach. My eyes are on the fielder. I can see him catch the ball and, re and advance to third base or advance from third to home faster than my coach can tell me to go. Okay? So I want to be on the base with my heel, and instead of looking ahead at my coach, I'm looking up at the play. He catches it, I advance. Okay? And if you're watching it, you know you're not going to leave early. If you're going just on the sound of your coach's voice and you're trying to guess when he's going to say go, there's more of a chance that you're going to leave early. Same thing goes at third. I'm going to retreat to the base and I'm going to turn towards the play. I'm not looking at home plate. I'm looking at the play. Okay? And then as long as we stay long enough, we're good to go. You make that decision. You go as hard as you can. All right, guys? Third base. Okay, I got one more video for third base before I get to it. Okay, we already know. We can tag up on a fly ball. We can score on a base hit. Score on a double in the gap. Okay, and the thing that I want to hit on for the 11, you guys, okay, nine, you guys are not able to do this yet, but it's still a great thing to learn because you're going to do it next year. Okay, and that's how do we read a pass ball and score on a pass ball. So I'm going to flip back to the video. This one is the Cubs. I did reward you, Cub fans. Uh, can't always trash them, even though I do kind of like the Cubs even for a Sox fan. So I'm going to show you guys one more video. These are players that are not still on the team, so you might not even know who they are, but that's okay. What I want you guys to see is his feet before he commits to going to the plate. Okay, so Cubs are losing. Sorry, guys. Pass ball. 
Runner comes across easy, but that's not what I want you guys to see. What I want you to see is when they cut to the view of his feet taking a walking lead at second or at third base. He's not standing still and he's not facing sideways. He's taking a walking lead. And this lets him be in a running position to score. So you're going to see it coming up right here in a second. He starts walking to the plate, walking to the plate, walking to the plate. Ball gets away and he's off. Okay, that's why we take a walking lead at third base. We don't take a shuffle lead at third base. Our feet are ready to go forward. Ball gets away. And we are able to score easy. Flip back around really quick. All right. Okay, so a couple things here. Um, like Coach Chris said, the most important thing is getting that guy all the way around to the plate. And now we know a bunch of ways that we can do it. All right, situational hitting, okay, even though as you guys at the younger levels are still learning how to hit in general, if we can hit situationally and be smart in the situation of the game, okay, that allows our team to take advantage of a lot of things. Okay, I want to really quick before we go, as a hitter, situational hitter with a runner on third base, I want to explain to you guys what to look for. Okay, there's a lot of ways to score a runner from third base at the plate. A squeeze play with a bunt is one of them, but that's going to be called by the coach. Okay, what's important for you as a hitter is if you're swinging, you have to look at the alignment of the infield defense. Okay, if the infield is back, they're playing regular depth or deeper. That is the easiest way we could possibly score a run. They're giving us a run. All you have to do is hit a ground ball. It doesn't even have to be a great ground ball. You just have to hit a ground ball. We score a run. That's a gift. Okay? If the infield is playing in. Okay? We talked about sacrifice fly, putting a ball up in the air. If the infield's playing in, we don't want to hit a ball on the ground. Okay? That's where we want to lift it up in the air, get that ball to the outfield, let that guy tag up and score. So part of being a situational hitter is looking around and understanding that situation for yourself and reading the play and taking advantage of it. Okay. Everything that we're talking about right now isn't the skill of what you're doing. It's the knowledge of what you're doing. Okay. It's understanding the game and different ways to do things where it's not just jump in the box and swing away and grip and rip. Okay. Being a good hitter means you understand what situation you're in in the game and what you can do to help your team. Okay. That is going to be all for today. Uh, I will send you guys, your parents information tomorrow about our individual team sessions next week. We're going to hang out a little bit, do some team building. Uh, you guys can chat with each other, catch up. Uh, so that information will go to your parents tomorrow. Uh, but number one thing I want you guys to do the rest of today is get outside, get outside, have some fun, do some baseball activities, get a little workout in, make sure you're throwing uh, just to stay loose, do the throwing program if you've been throwing, um, but take advantage of a great day here. Have some fun with it. Enjoy whatever baseball you can while we're not playing baseball, and then we'll jump back into the classroom again tomorrow morning. All right, guys, be safe, go have some fun, and I'll see you tomorrow.